Now, I'd be first to admit, this looks dumb as hell. This does not make me want to pop the hood at the uh, car meet and show off what I got. This, this looks ridiculous. But as ridiculous as it looks, does it work? Because that's all I'm worried about is, does it reduce heat soak in my induction system? So that's what I'm going to find out. And all this is is this right here. Literally, it's for a clothes dryer. That's all this is. Ten bucks for eight feet. I end up needing two of these. Uh, so twenty dollars. And then I have a five dollar roll of aluminum uh, tape stuff. That's just to kind of seal up some of the gaps and holes in between everything. So that's twenty-five dollars of home improvement goods uh, or home goods improve the performance of the car. I decided to take a very scientific approach in measuring the difference between having this on the pipe and not. By doing that, not only am I measuring the external temperature of the pipes before and after, but I'm also measuring the internal temperature of the air going through the entire induction system through multiple data points. First being the intake air temperature sensor here. The second one is the MAP sensor that's located down in the intercooler, or the tip sensor, which are IAT2s, and then you have the MAP sensor located here in the intake manifold, which picks up manifold charge temp. So I can measure the air temperature before it enters the system, after it comes out of the intercooler, and then after it makes its way into the intake. So those are going to give me some good data, seeing if that there's any reduction in the system as it makes its way through. Also, I'm measuring other important uh, bits of data that tells you if the air is being affected temperature-wise, and that's measuring the air density of the air traveling through the system. So I'm measuring manifold air density, boost air density, and ambient air density. So I can get a more scientific approach to seeing if this works. So with that said, let's go ahead, take a look at both runs I did and see what the differences are, if there is any. All right, I'm gonna do my very best to try to go over this data because it's a little interesting and um, you know, I am good at losing my track of thought. Okay, we're gonna start over here on the left side of the screen. This is the run I did before adding any of the, you know, heat shielding to the pipes. We're gonna sample the data in a few different spots. We're gonna sample the data before I start the pool, before boost comes in, as boost comes in, like once boost hits, and then at the end of the run, and then I'm gonna sample the peak numbers between both runs. We can start with some important data, like, uh, let's see, Ambient air temperature, 90 degrees. It was toasty, it's been toasty. It's the whole point of doing something like this. Intake air temperature at the filter, 108 degrees. Intake air temperature after the intercooler, 127. Intake air temperature, manifold air temperature in the manifold, 128. And down here we have our Manifold air density, our boost air density, and our ambient air density. So we can see ambient air density is 94. You want to keep track of that number because that does change between this run and the second run because the second run was way hotter. So keep an eye on that and see what happens to that number. So yeah, that's all our numbers at the beginning of the runs. Where's my peak boost? Where is it at? Eh, peak boost is like right here, beginning of the run. Um... Manifold air density is 239. Boost air density is 145. At this point, IATs drop to 99. IAT2 is to 126. Manifold charge temp 127. Generally, the delta, the difference between the MAP sensor in the manifold and the one in the intercooler is only generally about a one degree difference in temperature between those two. And then we go to the end of the run. Our IATs are 93 degrees, our IAT2s are 124, manifold charge temp 126. Manifold air density was 230, boost air density 136. Uh, the peak numbers that we got for manifold air density and boost air density was 240 and 146. Those numbers are calculated off of manifold pressure and temperature. So 
The higher these numbers, the more air density there is, the more power you'll make. So we're coming over to our second run. This is with all of the crazy looking foil all over the pipes. And uh, it was a significantly hotter day. As you can see, my ambient air temperature was uh, 95. IATs before the run were 109 degrees. IAT2s, 131. Manifold charge temp, 132. Manifold air density is 88. And our ambient air density is 93. So it's one less because it's hotter. One less than the previous run. That means there's less density in the atmospheric air altogether. That's something to keep in mind. Beginning of the run, peak boost. Let's see, 24 PSI, about the same as last run here. IATs, 100. IAT2s, 129. Manifold charge temp, 131. Manifold air density, 239. Boost air density, 145. We'll look at the end of the run. And at the end of the run, we were 97 IAT, 127 IAT2, 129 manifold charge temp, 234 manifold air density, 140 boost air density. Uh, peak was right here, 239 manifold air density, 145 boost air density. So if you look at peak for peak, peak on the last one was 240 manifold air density, 146 boost air density, but it was also one point higher in ambient air density because it was cooler that day. One less this run, boost pretty much the same. Actually, they are the same where I'm sampling this, 24.17, so that's pretty cool. So, you know, that was very interesting. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much of a difference at all, except there's another piece of data that I've acquired between having the shielding on the pipes and not, and that's taking a temp gun and measuring the exterior temperature, the surface temperature of each pipe with and without the shielding. So let's take a look at that. And here are the temperatures before, you know, things are really toasty. Surface temperature of the intake pipe is 150 plus. The silicone part into the inlet of the turbo is 170. The outlet pipe coming from the turbo is 163. And the rubber pipe coming from the intercooler to the throttle body, 134 to 144. So yeah, things were toasty. So here's the interesting part. Exterior surface, 99, 100. I think it's bouncing all over the place because of the reflective surface of the materials throwing off the temp gun. But you can see on the outside, it gets up to about 148, but I pull the shielding back and that's 139. So it was definitely reducing the temp or the heat soak going into the intake pipe. So I would assume it's doing the same thing for every other pipe that it's wrapped around. So that's pretty significant. Which leads me to believe that even though in the data it didn't look too significant, once again, you gotta remember, the second run was significantly hotter outside, yet it kept the temps the same as it was on a cooler day. And now seeing that the exterior of the surface is about 10 to 11 degrees cooler with the pipes covered, makes me believe that if the temp was the same as the first run, it would be about 10 to 11 degrees cooler, which is a significant difference, I would say, for $25 worth of material. I mean, yeah, this looks dumb. I just uh, wish there was a, a better solution. I mean, there, there are, but they're more expensive solutions. It's like this. It's a gold foil tape, and you wrap all your pipes and it creates a reflective barrier. It's an isolator, not an insulator. It isolates the pipes from radiant heat, which is everything under here is all radiant heat. I don't know. I'm not really happy with the results. I was hoping maybe a little bit more, but perhaps I was being a bit optimistic considering that this is not even material made to go on an automotive application and it still did something. I guess you know, that tells me all I need to know. But the fact, I guess, that it even did anything, it's kind of impressive, I guess, in its own. Which just shows you the importance of, uh, you know, keeping heat away from your induction system. Now, if only I can cool the temperature down even more. That's another idea I'm working on. 
that you may or may not see in a future video. But with all of that said, uh, let me know what you think of this little project and uh, would you really do this to your car? Is it really worth 10 degrees difference? Let me know. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up here for the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for the next Cars Creative video.